I prefer Mark as a partner because he's got three times as much money as all the other little men here. Hey what's going on guys and welcome back to another video. We post videos every day so if you'd like to show your support smash the thumbs up button if you're a fan of Shark Tank, join the notification squad by subscribing and hitting that bell notification on but also don't forget to comment down below saying I subscribed to enter our monthly shoutouts and we'll make sure to reply and thank as many of you as we possibly can. Hope you enjoy the video. The Sharks have heard hundreds of pitches in ABC's popular reality pitch series Shark Tank and, over these past 9 years, they have invested tens of millions of dollars in the best ideas and there have also been some businesses that have become greatly successful without a shark's investment. From simply making the entrepreneurs rich, to affecting millions of households all across the United States, to making a difference at the other end of the world, here are 10 times Shark Tank changed lives. During Season 6, Dr. Christopher Sekessels, CEO of Syndaver Labs, introduced this company that makes synthetic human tissue and body parts, something that is vitally important to the advancement of medical training along with having many other useful applications. He eventually struck a deal with Robert, who wanted to invest $3 million in exchange for 25% equity in the company, but when they later traded further information and initial terms, the partnership fell apart, mainly because Christopher wasn't ready to be replaced as CEO. Sindaver Lab still ended up a huge success however, as the company is steadily growing and its products have appeared in many TV shows, including Grey's Anatomy, Mythbusters and CSI Crime Scene Investigation. In the latest season of Shark Tank, a man called Logan Riley stepped in front of the investors looking for $300,000 for 15% equity and went home with a pretty crazy deal. After introducing Rockblock, a portable, wireless vinyl player with a rechargeable battery, a built-in speaker as well as a Bluetooth connectivity for speakers or headphones, the Sharks seemed pretty impressed. Yet, Barbara Corcoran went out, stating that she thought it was too early for an investment and Mark Cuban followed her, saying he was worried that there wasn't a big enough market. Kevin O'Leary on the other hand, saw the potential for a niche market and offered $300,000 for 50%. While Lori Griner also thought that the product was clever, she went out, saying it was too expensive. Robert Herjavec, on the other hand, said that he loved the product and its beautiful design and stated that he thought Riley was a great guy who was ready to move on to the next big thing. For that reason, he offered him half a million dollars for the whole company along with a two-year employment and a six-figure contract with an additional royalty of $5 per unit going forward. Riley didn't have to think about it very long and immediately accepted the deal, walking out of the shark tank really happy that he found one shark who understood that what he wanted most was to move on from rock block to create something new. In episode 26 of season 5, Mark Cuban made a deal with Rob Dickens and Brad Scrutter who together had founded an urban adventure and obstacle course company called Rugged Races. For 25% equity in their Boston-based company, the investor gave the pair $1.75 million which allowed them to expand the company to 28 cities, with sales effectively doubling to $10.5 million within the first year alone. Dickens and Scrutter had to move to a new headquarters and hire additional staff workers. It seems that Cuban made a very wise investment, as the two co-founders also have plans to expand Rugged Races to international territory in the future. Fortunately, Melissa Carbone didn't scare all the sharks away with the characters of her life horror entertainment company, 1031 Productions. Billionaire investor Mark Cuban offered her $2 million for 20% stake in her Los Angeles-based company. After the show, the company had to triple its cast to nearly 1,000 and has since also created New York Haunted Hayride which, like the LA Haunted Hayride, is a Halloween-themed attraction held on all weekends in October. Apart from these attractions, there are also the Great Horror Camp Out during summers, the Ghost Ship and the Great Movie Horror Night and with over half a million of annual profits that the company has been pulling in since Carbone appeared on television, Cuban's investment has clearly turned out to be quite profitable. In October 2015, young entrepreneurs Chelsea and Lei Ann came to the Shark Tank seeking a $150,000 investment in exchange for 10% of their Lollyware business. 
The two had met at one of the most prestigious design schools in New York City and combined their passion about the environment and sustainability with their design skills to produce a disposable drinking cup that was not only 100% biodegradable, but also completely edible or bio edible as the tagline put it. The sharks love the cup of the future that offers fun flavor combinations for both beverages and desserts, so much so that they didn't even let the girls answer all the questions before making the first offer. Robert Herjavec started things off by offering to put up the $600,000 the entrepreneurs were missing from their goal to raise $1 million. He wanted to team up with another shark to invest 600 k for which the entrepreneurs offered him 25% of the business to which Mark Cuban suddenly said done. The sharks then started talking all at once, with the girls looking a little overwhelmed and trying to hear out every single one of the investors. At this point, the tables had turned, as the sharks were now the ones trying to impress the young entrepreneurs with their offers and their amount of money. As they wouldn't stop talking, the girls almost looked confused, and then a little relieved when Lori Griner dropped out since they now only had four sharks left to deal with. After this ridiculous brawl among the investors had gone on for a few minutes, Kevin O'Leary eventually summed up the options, and Chelsea and Leanne went home with Mark Cuban and Barbara Corcoran as new business partners, as well as four times as much money as they had come for, without having to give up too much of their business. In Season 4, mother and daughter duo Tracy Noonan and Danielle Villagy made a deal with Kevin O'Leary for their cupcakes in a jar. The shark offered them $75,000 for royalties instead of equity from Wicked Good Cupcakes, making $1 for every jar sold until he made his money back and 50 cents per jar after that. He has stated that it was one of the most profitable investments he has made on the show, as the two went from around $7,000 monthly sales to about $400,000 after appearing on Shark Tank, which means they make $4.8 million per year. Lori Griner had no idea that the deal she made with Aaron Krause, founder and CEO of the company Scrub Daddy in Season 4 would turn out to be one of the biggest success stories in the show's history. After a long bidding war between Lori, Damon and Kevin O'Leary, Krause struck a deal with Lori who gave him $200,000 for 20% equity in his company that produces sponges made of polymer, which changes texture, soft in hot water, hard in cold water. The little scrub daddy sponges with smiley faces are now a regular feature in many American households and pulled in over $100 million in sales in just three years. In Season 2, Jeff Stroop's idea of the Hycon, a connector for fire hydrants and garden hoses that attaches quickly and easily, really inspired Mark Cuban, and he decided to offer $1.25 million for the whole company along with a three-year employment deal for Stroop and an annual salary of $100,000 to run the company. However, after the show aired, Stroop and Cuban couldn't agree on a deal, with Stroop stating that Cuban's ego got in the way while Cuban didn't want to comment on it at all. The two also argued about the licensing of the product's design and eventually went separate ways. The company turned out to be pretty successful, as it is now valued over $5 million and Cuban surely felt cheated out of a great opportunity. Mark Firgay stepped in front of the Sharks to introduce his idea of his educational label and publishing house called Classroom Jam that would revolutionize the way things are taught in schools. According to the high school English teacher, he explained that while looking for a better way to get his pupils into literature such as Shakespeare, he had come up with a solution in music. Firgay started playing one of the songs from his album, for which he had written and performed all of the songs, and it clearly impressed all the Sharks. The teacher was seeking $250,000 for 10% of the company, but didn't want to sell the rights to the songs, which upset the investors. After a lot of business talk, Kevin O'Leary asked Mark to step out, something the Sharks don't do very often, and tell the other Sharks that he didn't want to compete with them, but wanted everyone to offer a $250,000 and a 5% royalty for 100% of the company, which would include the rights to the songs. When they offered Furrier the deal, he thought for a moment, before repeating that he wanted to build a company and maintain equity in it. Despite persuasion from Kevin O'Leary and Damon John, Robert Herjavec saw that the teacher was not budging, so he alone made Furrier a new offer of $250,000 for 100% of the company with the option to buy back 49% and then another one of $250,000 for 51% of the company, which led to an argument between Herjavec and O'Leary. 
because the entrepreneur in front of them seemed a little bit overwhelmed at this point, O'Leary re-explained the original offer, and Kevin Harrington added that once the Sharks got their money back, Furigay could buy back equity that would equalize the stake of all six, and after much negotiation, the high school teacher decided to take his new offer from all five Sharks and sell them his entire company. In Season 5, Barbara Corcoran decided to invest in a husband and wife duo's lacy leg warmer company Grace and & Lace, and little did she know that this would turn out to be one of her most profitable Shark Tank investments ever. For $175,000, Barbara got a 10% stake in the fashion company that made over $7 million in sales over the following few years, but the company didn't just change the lives of its founders and their investor. Grace and Lace also partnered with the multicultural organization Angel House in 2013, where a portion of every sale would go towards building orphanages in India to house 50 orphans each. And in 2015, Grace and Lace also funded a safe house for young women, giving around 40 women at a time a safe place to live. Thank you for checking this video out, and don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe for new videos every day. Turn that bell notification on and comment down below that you subscribed and we'll make sure to reply and thank as many of you as we possibly can. Once again thank you for watching and see you next time.